the thing is, we haven't had to think about risk management in the way that we're thinking about it right now. Mm. But that's always been the case. You always have to you always have to look at all the risks that are out there. Let's go back 12 years, right? Everybody that traded mortgage-backed securities traded with two shops, Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers. Why? Because they're the biggest. Yeah. Nothing could happen. Nothing could go wrong. We're going to do all of our trades with them. But if you were a good risk manager, you would say, well, that's two points of, of failure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we should spread our trades out among a lot of different counterparties mm. to manage that risk, especially if you saw the financial crisis coming, which I was, I was fortunate enough to be with a firm that did see it coming, and we spread out our counterparties among you know, 20 or 30 different trades, uh, just in case that trade got broken in an event that somebody went down. Well, not a lot of people thought about that back then. Uh, a few people did, and if you thought about it, you came out looking really good. The points of failure that we have today is custodian risk. That is your counterparty risk that we should all be managing. Mm -hmm. and, and if you're putting all your money in one of the largest custodians, because, well, they're the biggest, nothing could go wrong, what could go wrong? They have insurance, sure, you know, but um, a lot of things could go wrong mm -hmm. uh, in any custodian, no matter how big they are, no matter if they're publicly traded, no matter if uh, they have a lot of assets on their balance sheet, it could all go away right away. Just like Bear did, just like Lehman did. Mm. So what we try to do as a fiduciary of other people's money, and I'm sure you do the same, is spread out those yeah. assets among a lot of different custodians. By the way, we did the same thing that you guys did. We saw a lot of solutions out there that weren't great. We wanted to further diversify, so guess what? We built our own custodian solution for a lot of the assets that we manage. Mm. So, uh, so I think you guys are on the right track there. But, but that, to me, is the biggest point of failure, and it has to be managed. What are some of the What are some of the things that you see as points of failure as far as counterparty risk? Well, and I think other just risks? just to jump back on that, we we are a custodian today, but right. our core business is we match buyers and sellers, right, in any asset class. So for us, we will always be exchange operators, and right. I think as the market grows and as we do see more custodians come to play mm. I envisage a, a network of custodians where yes. we would just be one of them and at any point a fund is probably going to not be allowed to trade and custody with the same venue and the, the fund that trades with me mm. can tell me to give up their Bitcoin to wh whoever's in the network of custodians mm. and we do that and it's just a give up you we execute and we pass it back and and as that network grows right we're spreading the risk, right? That's what I was and, gonna say. So yeah. it, it really, at every layer of it, it really is the decentralization that adds safety to a degree because you have this distributed risk, right? Which is more more legs on the table, right? So you have less less likely that that one side of it gets too heavy for everybody else to balance out, right? Because yeah. the problem is when you have incoming and outgoing, everything's balancing around. Because crypto happens very fast, even yeah. though it's inefficient in some ways. If you have the, the Bear and Lehman example, and you only have two or three prime brokers in the space, and one of them goes down, then it flings the other ones yeah. off the table too, I, right? do, I do think you get one or two that make the move though, and you should see a, a string of others following. Well, people are gonna follow the right the right moves, right? Yeah. And I think a lot of people are, are holding their cards, yeah. right? And they're like, what do you got? And it's like, yeah. no, what do you got? You know, and there's this sort of like poker face thing that's happening right now because a lot of the companies are going through a due diligence phase. hundred percent. And, yeah. and they're, they're probably, if they're, if they're doing it right, they're going to take their time yeah. because no one wants to be the first one and fall on your face. Yeah. You'd rather have the most bulletproof solution, yeah. you know, and I think that's what it, as it, it, to me, that's what you've seen in as the, as the major weak point in a lot of the DeFi stuff recently is that people put their, their their money somewhere and they trust that it's fine because they don't have the skill set to audit the code they don't really know what's happening under the hood whereas like i think the the bigger institutional clients the bigger institutional managers they understand that that is the key thing and yeah. they'll hire the right people if they can't do it themselves yeah. to like really go through and really audit where it goes how it works and make sure that they're fine yeah. because they know that they're managing a trillion dollars they're not just some college kid yellowing, yeah. you know, like they sold their VW Beetle and they're just yellowing yeah. that money into into wormholes. It's our or jobs, like that. right? Yeah. To educate these guys. 